bit about uh, some of the science behind field scripts and uh, field script management zones. Thank you, Dale. Um, try to get around here. Thanks so much. And again, I am uh, I've worked with Kip for a long time and been with IFS since uh, almost the on start. So, what we try to do, and, and probably what you've heard in the past, is with our breeding group, we've, we've always talked about genotype by environment. And we're, obviously, we're still interested in that, but with our group, we're as much interested in that genophyte, genotype by environment at a subfield scale. Not as much as a, a geography, but inside that field, field, all those environments that we have to account for. Because we have to know what that productivity level is for each particular acre, and really sub-acre. As Tracy mentioned, one of our key components is we do break that field down into 10 by 10 meter grids and assess a potential productivity on each one of those 10 by 10 meter grids. And so that's quite a bit different than what we've done in the past. And you've heard Ted talk about soil type. The grower knows that soil type differences or soil mineralogy differences out there in the field could influence and probably does influence the productivity of each acre, but it doesn't completely describe that variability. What I have in this first um, poster is essentially we see a, our GBI image, essentially an aerial imagery taken from that, um, taken from a, an airplane and really assessing that variability in biomass density across essentially this farm. You can see this is the building that we came from. We're approximately right here or in this particular map right here. The blue lines in that GBI now let's say the GBI is draped over, over topography. The blue lines is your national soil map, or Sergo, and you can see that they are also draped across. If you look at that variability within that soil type as a surrogate on that GBI, really talking about that, that spatial, um, those spatial differences in biomass, you can see that soil type alone does not describe that variability. And so when we look at that and start to break that down into 10 by 10 meter grids, we really start to see how that really is defined. So think about it this way. With that topography layer, if you look, uh, if you look to the east here, you can see that there is probably a 10 to 15 feet, foot difference in elevation. So if we get a two inch rainfall here on this particular farm and it's high intensity, it'll still land, particularly up there on that upslope area, but we have to predict how much would run essentially to this downslope area and benefit this crop here and not do as much there. But those, those are the challenges that we have because if we can produce 10, 15 bushels more down in this downslope area with higher population and really getting to that potential productivity, we need to. And you can see that in that topography map. And so obviously topography is a, is a key component but we also have imagery, that yield data that we talked about previously, fertility, and many other layers that we utilize in almost a limiting factor analysis to understand that potential productivity. That helps us with our prescription as well as our communication to that grower on what could be limiting on each and every acre. When we think about population, as Tracy talked about in our Gen 5 uh, study on titration of population on each hybrid, we get to the point where we understand that there are differences in hybrids across each uh, each environment and in, within population, and trying to match that. Here I've got a uh, I've got a poster again talking about population by row spacing, and again 30,000 at 30 inch, 30,000 at or I'm sorry 30,000 30 inch, 42,000 at 30 inch, 20,000 at 20 inch, and 42,000 at 20 inch. And really we're talking about how much light we can capture there. You can see the LAI, or leaf area index, and how when population increases, that difference in how much sunlight those plants, um, because of the differences of rope spacing, how much carbon they actually capture. And again, when we think about what that canopy light penetration is at R2 as compared to R7, we can see that 20 inch is always a little bit more or let's say more dense and less light falls through that than in that 30 inch. And so when we talk about these different environments, from up there on the slope to down here in this lower area, meeting that population in the future with our wide span of uh, productivity levels, 
sometimes we'll probably have to move to a narrower row configuration to meet that optimum population each one. So finally, as Tracy showed, our prescription. Our prescription is 10 by 10 meter specific, hybrid specific, field specific, essentially getting around to that potential productivity on every acre. Thank you.